Welcome to another edition of the Wildcat Report. It's another busy weekend here on campus with football and volleyball. We'll talk about volleyball coming up. But the Wildcat football team will play game number two of the 2012 season Saturday night against the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Kickoff set for 730 at Arizona Stadium. Should be a great atmosphere. We hope to see everybody out to see the game. For the Wildcats, well, they're in preparation mode right now to take on a top 25 team. Let's hear from head coach Rich Rodriguez, Dan Buckner, and Kadeem Carey on the Cowboys. What uh, what concerns you more is is how many plays the defensive guys are going to be playing, and so you have to weigh that into uh, factor about your tempo. But at the same time, tempo is such a big part of what we do. You know, if we if we change our personality offensively, we're not going to help ourselves if we don't score. So we got to do whatever we can to score, and then our defense has got to go out there and do whatever they can to stop. It sounds simplistic, but that's the truth. Dan's a good football player, and he's got a lot to prove this year. And I think he's come out every. You know, what I've been most impressed is the way he's practiced. I and mean, him and Terrence have really practiced well. And and uh, hopefully this game they won't have to play as many plays because we got to get you know some other guys in there. And if they have the other guys have a good week, we'll have a better rotation. But I don't know if about being more aggressive is is we're, we're going to have to be sure tacklers, you know, because the, the, the quality of their skilled players, their running backs especially, and. We've got to be able to tackle well, they're, and they're very big up front, you know. So I'm, I'm sure they'll come out and just try to pound us too. You know, they they pounded us last year a little bit, and uh, got a lot of the same people back up front. So um, it's a concern, but we got to do a great job, a better job of getting off blocks, recognizing things, and getting there in a hurry. But I think the one thing about it is our guys have played against them, so they know how good they are, and uh, uh, you know, and how well we got to play to win the game. If you could switch it around, would, would you have, you know, South Carolina State this week and, and Oklahoma State next week? You know, I don't know. I don't, whenever you play them, I think, uh, you know, you're going to play them when you play them. I really haven't thought much about that. A lot of times it's your opening opponent. You, you know, sometimes if you got a young team coming in, you don't want to play, a, you know, a top 10 ranked team or top 20 ranked team, your opener. But if you're going to play them, you might as well play them, at least when you're, you're relatively healthy. You know, I don't know if we're really, really, really healthy, but we're not in too bad shape in that regard. Uh, but we're... You know, with the way where our team is right now and how thin we are, um, it doesn't, I don't think it really matters when we play somebody. As I, I tell our guys, I don't want us to have any regrets from the standpoint of knowing we could have prepared better or played better because you don't have this opportunity all the time to play a nationally ranked team at home at night uh, in a great atmosphere. So we've got to make the most of it. I mean, I feel like I played well for an opener. Uh, I contributed a couple times on third downs and things like that. I mean, the biggest thing was we got the win. I was just thinking, I was walking back here, and I was just like, you know, I was like 10 catches. But, I mean, what would 10 catches have done if we would have got the loss? Nothing, you know. I mean, it's really all about contributing to the win. And, uh, I mean, 10 catches looks way better when you won the game. And then at the end of the day, I'm happy we got the W. We ran, what, 88 plays or something, I think. I mean, so it just shows that there's an opportunity for everyone to get the ball. I know Austin had seven catches. Terrence had eight catches. I had 10. You know, Richard had like six. So, I mean, there's a lot of balls to go around as well as big plays to be made catching the ball as well as blocking you know that's something we looked at on the film that just as a collective group of wideouts you know we blocked a lot better and then when we did block well you know it led to big plays in the running game you know, I just remember that we lost and it wasn't close and so I'm not trying to have that this year. You know, it's big fast and physical I mean a great college team I mean I felt like that's all I remember and I don't even think about the last the last time they beat us because I mean it's a different offense it's a different defense and I feel like if we go out there it's gonna be a great game because we can compete they go compete. I mean, if we establish it early, I mean, bust some holes, I mean, hit the holes pretty good. I feel like they'll back down and kind of kind of give us the game. But uh, we just got to attack real hard and come out real strong. They love running their mouth, getting into you, but that's the part of the game. They play football that way, and we and we just don't. So, I mean, when they talk, it just most motivate us to go out there and just punch them, hit them right back in the face. So, I mean, it's all the football. I enjoy it. When they talk trash, I get a laugh out of it. So, but it's pretty cool. Our thanks to head coach Rich Rodriguez, Dan Buckner, and Kadeem Carey. Cats and the Cowboys, Saturday night, 7.30 at the stadium. When we come back, we'll touch base with U of A volleyball coach Dave Rubio. The Cats are hosting the Arizona Invitational this weekend at McHale Center. Don't miss your first chance to watch this year's Arizona basketball team at our annual Red-Blue game, Sunday, October 21st at 2 p.m. The 88 team will return to McHale to celebrate the 25th year anniversary of Arizona's first Final Four. This is also a great opportunity for you to come and celebrate Arizona basketball 
and see us in person for an incredible low price. Let's continue making McHale Center one of college basketball's best game day experiences and root on your 2012-13 Arizona Wildcats basketball team. Go Cats! Welcome back to Wildcat Report. With me today is Dave Rubio, head volleyball coach at the University of Arizona. Cats are hosting the Arizona Invitational this coming weekend here at McHale Center. And Dave, before we get into this weekend's event, let's talk about your team. You've got some youngsters, certainly a young team, freshman and sophomore dominated. And tell us about the start to the season thus far. Well, it's certainly been somewhat unpredictable. Uh, we weren't quite sure uh, how the pieces were going to come together. Uh, being so young, uh, but I've been pleased with the last two weeks. Uh, I felt like uh, we're making progress from week to week, and I think from a coaching standpoint, that's what you're you're hoping for. When you talk about that progress, what things do you look for both in practice and in matches? Well, the interesting thing about us is that we're we're not practicing nearly as well as I as I would like them to, uh, but the the matches we've been actually performing a little bit better than I thought we would. So. Uh, our effort level and practice needs to get better on every contact and every day. And our, uh, uh, I think we just need to execute a little bit higher level uh, during the matches. And so uh, hopefully we'll continue to improve and show improvement this weekend. When you bring in uh, new players, you've got seven freshmen on your roster right now, three of them playing quite a bit. What's the learning curve like in that first season? Well, not only do we have seven freshmen, but we have three transfers incoming juniors also so we have a total of 10 new players trying to learn a new system new techniques uh, so the amount of information that's ongoing every day is is pretty overwhelming for the players so it, it's going to be a little bit of a process for everyone to kind of feel comfortable and and play without thought you know where it becomes second nature and and we're really a long ways away from that let's talk about the arizona invitational coming up this weekend what should the fans expect to see here at McHale? Well, we certainly are bringing in some good teams, even though maybe they're not. TCU is certainly a, 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 a named school that everyone recognizes, but Iona and Lipskin are, are both teams that are coming in and are very good. Uh, Lipskin has won their conference every year for the last several years. Uh, Iona is a very good program also. Uh, but it's going to be, for our young team, which is unpredictable, you know, you're not sure. You're hoping you're going to perform with some consistency, but at this particular point in the season, uh, we're not sure how they're going to perform. All right, look forward to it this weekend at McHale Center, the Arizona Invitational. Our thanks to head volleyball coach Dave Rubio. You can check ArizonaWildcats.com for all the uh, schedule and times coming up this weekend. Don't forget the U of A volleyball team hosting the Arizona Invitational Friday and Saturday at McHale Center. U of A women's soccer team will be up in Tempe for a tournament both Friday and Sunday. Football, Oklahoma State in town Saturday night at 7.30. And, of course, tickets on sale now for the men's red-blue basketball game Sunday, October 21st. That's the Wildcat Report. Thanks for joining us.